From wireless blue laser scanning to an automated turntable, we're going to take a look at the accuracy and detail that you get out of the Revopoint Metro Y Pro and also use it to design a little project. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're doing some 3D scanning with the Revopoint Metro Y Pro and we'll look at a variety of different scenarios. Let's get right into it. Now the scanner came in a nice case and includes an automatic turntable as well as a whole bunch of other accessories that we'll use here. And this handle is actually a battery that plugs in so that you can scan things wirelessly. And I found that that worked really well. You just connect to a Wi-Fi network on it. And we're gonna start by scanning this saw that I wanna do some mods on and it'd be nice to have a model of. So I've attached these little uh, target stickers at random locations and then I'm using the cross laser line mode here and it's just tracking off of those stickers and I'm doing my best to maintain a consistent distance and it's magic to see how quickly this fills in. I've gotta say out of the laser scanners I've used in this prosumer line, which uh, this is the third one, this is by far the fastest and uh, most trouble free that I've seen so far. And I'm working my way around the saw. The entire scan took somewhere a um, little less than five minutes to make my way around and get the right side of the saw here. I'm not worrying about the other side of the saw because uh, this is the side that I'm going to work with and design some parts off of. But uh, afterwards, you can see the point cloud that we got um, from this scan. Again, that was about, uh, you know, four or five minutes of scanning to be able to cover that pretty well. And when I uh, get this data, you have to go through a few steps to post-process it like any scanner. And this first step is called fusion, which basically, from what I understand, reduces the point cloud down a little bit. And now I can clip away any data that I don't want. But before that, let's take a look at some of the detail. I mean, those screws, the little markings on the castings and everything and this was done using a mode that uh, they've designed for reflective parts. I mean, this is very reflective material, and I didn't use any scan spray or anything like that. So it worked really well. Now I clipped away some of the extra data, and I can go ahead and mesh it. There are some other functions you can use if you want, um, but uh, I'm going to jump straight to the mesh rather than smoothing or simplifying anything because this is a, a really good model for what I want to do. So once I've created a meshed model, this is what I need to insert it into my CAD system. So here I've just opened that up in Fusion 360. I can align it to a coordinate system. I can add in planes and grab some of the geometry off that to model on. Now I'm gonna look at something a little bit more detailed with this TIG cup. And here I have it on their turntable. And the turntable is really cool because it wirelessly connects up to the computer. And you can use it in several different modes. See here it rotates and then it takes a snapshot of it. And this is using the full field mode rather than the laser mode. And so it's a structured light pattern that projects onto that face. And as it works its way around, it just builds up this data and stitches it all together. And it's pretty impressive. Now it can do this with markers or um, just using features, but since this is a pretty symmetric part and I have markers available, I'm using markers for everything. And I can clip away the extra data. And if you take a look, you can see some really good detail um, from the structured light scan on this part. And that structured light mode is really good from what I understand for larger objects as well. Um, but if you see those threads and everything on there, it's pretty good. Let's compare the actual diameters here to the dimensions in the scan because if it isn't uh, at least close to accurate, it's not going to be very useful for engineering applications like I want to use. And this is pretty impressive. Right here it is within a tenth of a millimeter and well within that. And so that's, that's really good. Now I want to try this with two different laser modes. This one is using cross laser lines. And notice the turntable rotates continuously. It still turns itself on when you start the scan, but it rotates continuously and you can see it building up. All of these uh, scan shots are in real time, so you can see how quickly it acquires the data. And this is set you know, fairly slow on the turntable, so it's taken a little bit of time, but you don't have to do anything. And it still you know, was about two or three minutes to capture all the scan data. And I can just trace around here to get rid of all of that extra data that I don't want. So I'll select the part I want, invert the selection, and click delete. And I'm left with just my uh, regular cup. 
Now here with the cross line uh, laser scan, I didn't get quite as uh, good of detail as I did with the structured light. And when you check the dimensions, it is still, you know, really, really close. So um, very good quality, uh, just not quite as much detail, but I still think that that's going to be better. Now this has parallel lines. And parallel lines don't give you as large of a field of view, so things take a little bit longer to scan. And so um, as you work your way around, though, it, it's a little bit higher quality. So that's the trade-off. With the cross lines, you get a larger field of view. If you wanted to scan a fender or something like that, it would be faster. But uh, if you want more detail, the parallel lines seem to win out here. You can see it's just a little bit more detailed, definitely a little bit closer to that structured light, though not quite as detailed, but once again, extremely accurate uh, on the dimensions. So um, very good there. Now I want to scan something a little bit larger and metallic here on this. Now I do have a little bit of scan spray on here, but I'm just using the markers on the turntable. I haven't applied any to the chuck and it's really magical to watch this appear. I mean, you know, I, I'm a kid who grew up with dial-up internet, and I was excited to be able to download a song, even though it took all night, and seeing this kind of next-level technology, not just in factories, where I've seen it in my engineering career for years, um, but at this prosumer level, to be able to do something like this, pretty impressive. So, uh, you know, once again, it's about three minutes to scan this, and then all of the pro... pro or uh, all of the post processing took right around five minutes, maybe between the you know clipping things and meshing it and uh, everything. Now let's check the dimensions on this, and uh, once again, very very close to the uh, actual reality. So you know you're within five thousandths of an inch on that on the diameter, so two and a half thousandths on a side. Now I wanted to try it without the turntable to see if that's the reason that uh, we had so much accuracy so that when you do a hand scan, you know, is it going to be as accurate? Now this did take a little bit longer rather than three minutes. It's, you know, probably closer to four. Um, still not too long to hand scan it. Mostly that's just working my way around to get to the back. And notice once again, I'm, I'm using those parallel lines and I do have a little bit of uh, extra data here to get rid of but it's pretty straightforward um, to be able to clip that out. And uh, after it's meshed, look at the quality of that. I mean, I didn't do any kind of manual, really anything other than getting rid of the extra data. And it's just as accurate here. So, you know, very, uh, very impressive so far. I've used several different 3D scanners. And I've got to say, you know, out of the laser ones in the prosumer level, this is the best I've used so far, but I haven't by any means tested them all. Now I'm back on the cross laser lines here on this one, two, three block. I want to see on something with no scan spray. This is just straight, you know, shiny metallic surface using the cross hatch laser lines, um, how accurate that can be. Notice how much faster it is to acquire the scan data when you're running those cross lines. So we got a model out here. Once again, it's really good. Now, if you want to get deep into those holes, there is a single line mode that you can use that's much slower to scan, but it can get much deeper into internal features like uh, these sorts of holes. I didn't do any work with that, but uh, it's just another tool in the, the belt. So it's nice that there are so many different options with this scanner. And once again, it came out really, really accurate. You know, that's within a thousandth of an inch of the three inch nominal size. I have a little project that I want to do with this. This is a MIG gun that's set up for welding aluminum. And this is an amperage controller. And I can interface this with my HTP machines um, to let me control my settings as I weld in real time, which is really cool. But this is for a straight cylinder, like on a TIG torch, and this has a bit of a curvature to it. So I want to design an adapter to go in between these two and fill that gap so it'll be able to attach a little bit better without sliding down. Now I've put a few targets here on the MIG gun, and I'm just using the crossed laser lines because I want to move fast with this, and boy is it fast to pick up a lot of data. You can see how much it's picking up both off the MIG gun and also the table below. Now there is a setting that you can change so that it won't pick up the data further than what you're scanning, but the extra data doesn't seem to be uh, slowing down my computer at all, so I figure I'll just pick it all up and then delete it later, and that'll be faster than messing with you know, some of those settings to, to get it just right. But if you did want to limit the data that it collects, you can limit it to a certain distance away from the 
uh, scanner. Now here is the scanned surface that I got off of the top. And this is going to be all that I need to be able to design off of. So I can export this as a file that can directly import into Autodesk Fusion 360. Now, this is probably not the very best uh, CAD software, honestly, to build this on uh, to a mesh, but it can work. So with a little bit of uh, work, I can turn that mesh into a faceted solid body. And if you want to learn more about doing that, let me know. Maybe we could make a video about that in the future. Um, but then I drew up the size of cylinder that I'd need to attach it to and I just used that scanned body to subtract off of it like a tool and here is the piece that I need and that should be a perfect fit to match to the top and bottom um, when I go to put these two parts together so I can just print it out and be ready to go. Here's my first draft at least of this part and it turned out pretty good. I have the exact match to this curvature and this pocket here on the inside and so it can set right on the back and then it's a perfect fit for the amperage controller on top. Now I might look at uh, printing this with some TPU um, to make it a little bit more grippy on the inside. Um, there's a little bit of uh, foam on the inside of this and then strap it on, but uh, it's definitely a concept that I'm gonna keep playing with. And there really wouldn't be a good way to measure this uh, without using some sort of 3D scanning. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about how well that went together. So the fact that it comes with this turntable, automatically controlled, it has the stand, it has everything that you need all in one package. And I've gotta say, it was pretty easy to learn to use. It probably took me an hour or two to get the hang of it and learn what some of the different settings were. But once I did that, it's a very usable tool. And that's what I look at more than specs or anything else. Is it usable and can it deliver a result that I need consistently? And what I've seen so far is that it can. So yeah, if, if this is the type of thing you're looking for, I think this Revopoint Metro Y Pro is a really good fit for that. Now there are less expensive scanners, there's more expensive scanners, but this is a good fit for me. If you want to learn more about this, I'll put a link to their website down in the description as well as some other resources. Thanks a ton for tuning in. If you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below or leaving me a comment. We'll see you next time.